Ghana is not particularly big. It ranks 31st out of 54 African nations in size. But Ghana doesn't feel small when you're bouncing around for 500 miles in a pickup truck. That covers the distance from the capital city of Accra in the south to the frontier with Burkina Faso in the north, where one village honors its crocodiles as sacred. About halfway along the journey, you hit the city of Kumasi, where I quickly found myself at St. Cyprian's Anglican Cathedral. St. Cyprian was an African bishop of Carthage, and uh, he was one of the ancient uh, fathers, very committed, an African. That African identity is important for a church which, after all, is here as a result of the British Empire. The African church in the then Gulkus started in 1752 AD when the early missionaries and then they planted the church. They were chaplains to the merchants. Those British merchants brought colonialism along with Christianity to this part of West Africa. However, African community values and the gospel message of service to others sometimes blended well. The Mampong Baby Home may well be the most powerful impression of my entire visit to Ghana. We admit babies whose mothers died during delivery. They have fathers, but the fathers, they are more or less poor young men. Not only poor, but culturally unprepared to be single fathers to these children. But even more critical, once they lose their mothers, how can these newborn babies be fed? Within the district, there is scarcity of good drinking water. Or you can prepare formula with ordinary water. Otherwise, the child may get something like diarrhea. As a ministry of the Anglican Church, the Mampong Baby Home has access to baby formula and clean water. Those supplies and the 45 employees here serve as a lifeline for these children. Take care of them while they are babies. And when they can take in our local food, we normally release them to their fathers. I'm happy to be here because I like babies, children. The work of the Anglican Church is also apparent in the small village of Jacques Chi. The Order of the Holy Paraclete Anglican Sisters first came to Ghana in the 1920s and established schools that remain in operation today. The order returned a few years back and established an eye clinic run by Sister Abba. Because most of the people are farmers, they go to the farm and a leaf will brush on their eyeball. They also cut their firewood and a fragment will just go straight into the eye. The morning I visited, Sister Abba was busy treating a patient from a village about an hour away. She said she had a prick a week ago and it wasn't all that painful. And she thought it would go away by itself. And we've given her treatment and she's coming back in four days' time. The Anglican Church operates these ministries under the direction of Bishop Daniel Sarfo. Bishop Sarfo leads the Diocese of Kumasi, headquartered in Ghana's second largest city. I happened to be in Kumasi on the 36th birthday of the diocese. It was a small Thanksgiving service. If it had been on Sunday, the congregation would have been, in fact, the whole chapel would have been. But this was just for rest to give thanks to God, for our founding fathers, and thank God also for these 36 years, how far the law has brought us. I really don't know why Bishop Sarfo apologized for the turnout. On a Tuesday, a work day, and on a morning that began with torrential rain, the church was packed. In another display of the radical hospitality of African culture, I was seated in a place of honor at the front of the sanctuary. It was a good place to witness the spirit of the congregation, 
especially during the offering, when, stylistically at least, the African began to transcend the Anglican. It's customary for Ghanaians to bring their offerings to the front of the church according to the day of the week on which they were born. I also noticed the shape of the altar. Its sides slope upward to resemble a stool, historically the symbol of authority in Ghanaian culture. That culture includes deep respect for its elders, and in fact, the first bishop of Kumasi, John Benjamin Arthur, is buried right outside the cathedral. He was a father to everybody. Some of us would like to be like him, to be a father to all. I could hardly claim to present a story about the Anglican communion in Ghana without a trip to the north of the country. To visit the villages of northern Ghana is to step back hundreds of years into a pre-industrial society. The people of northern Ghana have battled with socioeconomic development since independence. And being the poorest and the most deprived and the areas with the worst health indicators, malaria indicators inclusive, we realized that this was the best, the neediest place for Nets for Life in Ghana. Rob Ratke is the president of Episcopal Relief and Development. We are very grateful for being able to walk around the village and to see the homes where all of you are living and to see the nets that you are using. Ratke's in northern Ghana to see the operation of the Nets for Life program, designed to stamp out the great killer of African children, malaria, using a simple $12 net. Net possession in northern Ghana in the areas of our uh, operation now stands at about 85%, and usage among children under 5 and pregnant women is 80% in these areas, which is a remarkable improvement. Stephen Zizi grew up in northern Ghana, suffered from malaria as a child, went to medical school in Europe, and could have chosen to practice medicine anywhere on earth. He chose to stay home in Ghana. I'd call him a hero. In the midst of all the crises we may have, in the midst of the problems we may have as a church, I think the opportunity still exists to use the little we have to heal a hurting world. A lot of the powerful memories of Ghana for me are related to the land. Lake Buzumtwi, a huge volcanic body of water with 45 miles of shoreline and a depth of 240 feet. The African sky at sunset along the savanna, a sky that seems to go on forever. But as in most places, it's the people and their customs who remain unforgettable. And that spirit provides a foundation for the growth of the Anglican Church in Ghana. My secret is the Holy Spirit. He directs. And sometimes he, he gives me a vision. When I was consecrated bishop, I also told them my vision for the diocese. And since the past 10 years, we've been implementing them by God's grace. Those things have come in.